Hi you guys, I am going to focus this video just on painting the eyes. I took about two hours of footage of this painting and um, so I got all the work I did on the eyes captured in video. So I'm going to uh, edit the footage down to just the eyes. So you can see how I do the eyes from start to finish and how I kind of work them into the rest of the painting. I work on them as I go. And uh, the first thing that I do with eyes usually is I just save a little bit of a white glint in the eye with masking. And I try to paint around that white glint as much as I can, but it's just kind of like insurance just to make sure that I save a little bit of the white glimmer in the eye uh, because it's so easy because the eyes are so small to paint over the area you wanted to keep white so I just put it there just for extra protection and that way I can paint freely and get um, the colors of the eyes nice and loose and I don't have to worry about being so tight and painting around the white area um, and sometimes I will try to paint around the little glimmer in the eye but um, this is just insurance to guarantee that I've got that nice white spot in the eye. So in this part of the video, I'm just showing you how I use my masking. And I've done a lot of other videos on masking and how to use soap to protect the bristles of your brush and all that good stuff in other videos. So be sure to check out my other videos um, for more direct access to me and um, to uh, have me uh, critique your paintings and give you direct advice. Um, you are welcome to join my Patreon. My Patreon is as little as $2 a month, so it's not a huge investment. And hopefully I will remember to put a link to my Patreon down below. And it's just a fun way to kind of keep in closer touch with you guys. Um, okay, so here I'm just um, going back into the eye and pulling some of the brown and the black into the eye from the surrounding fur just to try to connect the eyes to the foreground. And I do that with, in on a larger context, as in uh, attaching the cat to the background. I've talked about that in a lot of my other paintings, but um, I also do that with eyes. I try to, uh, like for the black part of the eye, I try to drag some of the black in their eyebrows or the part above the eye down into the cat so it kind of attaches the eye to the background of the cat. Uh, so it, they're not just, um, they, so they don't look like cut out pieces of eyes in the cat. They actually look like a part of the cat. They're incorporated into the cat and they're a part of the painting. They're not completely painting in and of themselves. So as much as I can, I do try to pull in, um, somehow connect the eyes to the, the cat. And usually that's through the dark areas of the pupil or the top of the eye that's, um, that touches against a black part of the fur. Um, of course, that's different when you're working with a lighter cat, but with these black cats, that's a great way to do that. And with this painting, I used cerulean blue, I used cobalt blue, I used ultramarine. Um, I'll even put in a touch of violet in the darker areas. And as you can see, what I do in this first wash with the eyes is I wet the complete eye and I try to put a few different colors of blue in there to keep it interesting. And I try to keep some areas of the, the iris light and some areas of the iris dark because in reality, uh, glistening eyes uh, change from each square, area, square millimeter to each square millimeter, if that makes sense. Like there's, you never see a flat just flat blue color in an eye, nobody's eye, not a cat, a human, dog, whatever you're painting. It's never flat and you wanna keep it as, um, as interesting as you can and use as many different colors as you can to create interest. 
And even for the pupils, the black part of the eye, I found, uh, this is a trick that I used recently on one of my latest commissions where the picture just was not good and the eyes really had to carry the painting. I really had to make them beautiful because the rest of the picture was not very beautiful. What I found was even in the blacks of the eyes, if you leave some light areas in the blacks and make some part of the pupil darker and maybe if you can make some of it even a dark blue so it really has some interest it really adds uh, a lot of interest and it makes it a lot more dynamic and interesting and uh, beautiful so i try to work very uh, wet and wet with the dark pupil but i also try to keep parts of the pupil light and parts of the pupil black and if you look at a picture a good picture of a pair of eyes and look at the pupils, you'll see that they're not all completely flat black. They've got light areas, they've got dark areas, they've got blues, purples, or maybe other colors that they might be, um, they might be reflecting from their environment that those eyes are looking at. So try to keep them as dynamic as you can by having light and dark areas within the pupil. You can almost think of them as a, even a mini painting within the painting. Uh, and the more interesting you can make them, the more beautiful that eye is going to be and the more wet it's going to look and the more glistening and um, just beautiful it will look. So here you can see I'm dotting in some ultramarine blue around the edges. I'm trying to keep everything um, really dynamic and, and different from millimeter to millimeter of the area of the eye. Just add some interest and um, not make it so flat. And um, when your paper is wet, I, I have the whole part of the eye wet usually when I'm working in this area, but as it dries, if you want to create some lighter areas that you got, you feel like you got too dark, you can use that trick I use that I've talked about in other videos where when the paper is getting drier but it's still moist you can put in little tiny drips of water and those drips of water will push the color and the granules of the paint itself out so what will be left is a lighter area and those granules of paint will pool in other areas and it'll create interesting gradations and um, again add to a more dynamic looking eye that looks wet so just keep that in mind also when you're painting eyes and just really the eyes in most pet portraits if you're doing pet portraits they should be the most interesting thing they should really be the what the whole painting is about humans are naturally attracted to eyes and if you make the eyes the strong point of the painting then you're going to have a successful painting even if you didn't paint the rest of it perfectly. But if you can get those eyes good, then you're going to be doing well. And now I'm working a little bit dry and dry here to really get the black eyeliner around the perimeter of the iris really nice and sharp. Just like eyeliner really pops out the eyes of um, the wear on a human. Also, uh, eyeliner will really pop the eyes of a cat or whatever animal you're working with that is lucky enough to have this feature a part of its eyes. And I use usually work dry and dry and I use a very tiny little sable brush, usually a zero or a, or a one size sable brush. And right here I've got burnt sienna and black on my brush to paint in those details. And sometimes what I, I'll do for these little eyeliner parts is I'll go in dry and dry and then let it dry a tiny little bit and then go over it with clear water and just brush over it softly and quickly and it will soften it. Um, and so it won't look so harsh because you do want to try to keep it soft but at the same time you really want that hard edge so uh, to get a little bit of softening what you can do like I said is go in like this dry on dry and then wait a few seconds and then go over it with a larger moist brush and just put a little water over it 
and get it, um, get the whole thing wet, go over the whole area, and it'll soften that line just a skosh to make it look a little bit less um, stunted, or I don't know, stunted's not the word, but just um, it'll make it look more natural and it'll be more pleasing to the eye. So I've let those little lines dry and as you can see, they faded quite a bit and I want to get them a little darker. And so I'm going in with some thick black paint here and just putting in some darker black in the pupils. And then I'm going around the edges of the eyes and darkening those little eyeliner areas once again because I really want them dark. And I found that throughout the um, working on this painting that I had to go in quite a bit. Everything seemed to be nice and dark and then it would fade and that's a sign that maybe the sizing was a bit off. And so I, I do wonder with this painting if the sizing was off because it always just seemed, my paint just seemed to act a little differently. Um, not too bad, but I had to work a lot on this painting to get everything really dark because as you can see in the cat's face There's a lot of dark areas and I really had to work at that So here I'm going in with some burnt sienna and just putting in um, An area around the outer part of the eye trying to keep it soft and um, I'm darkening everything and I'm trying to get all my tones correct and interesting and sometimes in these eyeliner areas I'll try to put different colors in each little area of the eyeliner just to keep it interesting and the more you can do that the better uh, and the more realistic the eye is going to look because usually if there's ever a line on an animal's face for whatever reason the colors in that line change they don't stay flat black all the way across the cat's face for example in a zebra or um, whatever whenever there's a line you want to keep that line dynamic and interesting by not making it one flat color and I try to do that as well in my cat eyes in the eyeliner of my cat eyes and so here I'm nearing the end of my painting. I've gotten a lot done and I'm just going in and getting those darks really, really dark. You really want to punch up a little bit of the darks in your eyes um, and, and refer to your um, reference photo often to really try to piece out, you know, where those darkest areas are and really punch them up because it'll really make those eyes pop and draw your eye right to the center of interest and that's what I was doing right there. In this final part of the last little picky details I am using an oil painting brush that is pretty stiff and uh, it's got synthetic bristles and I'm scrubbing out the light areas of the eyes around the periphery of the irises just to get those outer edges really light and luckily most of the blues I work with are very granular they're not staining and they scrub out pretty well so I did that to kind of put the finishing touches on these eyes. I've got all the dark areas nice and dark. And here's the final outcome. All right, you guys, so that's my video on eyes. I hope you find it helpful. And the next episode will probably be on fur and also the background. I did a lot of wet and wet painting and a lot of negative painting and it was really a lot of fun. I actually enjoyed doing a background. Imagine that. I hope you guys look forward to that and if you have any other video ideas that you would like to see me do, I would be glad to do that. So I hope you guys are having a good week. Bye. <laughs> My kitty wants to say bye to you guys. Say bye bye kitty. She's purring. I don't think she's happy though. Are you happy kitty? Oh! Mm-hmm. <laughs>